This is video three of the Harmony and Light Quilt Along. By now you should have your wedges cut out and it's time to start sewing our blocks. What I've done with my wedges that I've cut out is I've made sure to line them up in the color progression that I'm gonna use. So you can see one stack follows where the, the last stack leaves off. And I've done this because it's gonna help me keep my colors straight as I go to put my blocks together for the quilt. What I want is this, this uh, communion from one side of the block to the other. Each block has two print wedges in it, and I wanna make sure that those two print wedges aren't too far from each other in the color range that I've created. Also, it's just really satisfying to see them laid out like this, right? <laughs> so, for example, I've got one print wedge that I've selected to use. Now I wanna pick a companion for it in this block. So here's the wedge that I've selected. And what I wanna do is keep the next wedge that I choose within about four steps from there on my color progression. So one, two, three, four, or going back the other way, one, two, three, four. So I should be picking from these two stacks and not repeating the same fabric in the same block. So I'll just select whatever appeals to me. And here, I've got the wedges for my next block. So in my pattern, whenever I'm talking about right or left, and there is a lot of that, what I'm talking about is if you've aligned your wedge or your unit with the wide end at the top, we're talking about the right or left with it aligned that way. So let's start making our first block. To do that, you need your center wedge and a print wedge, and the print wedge you're gonna add to the right side of your center wedge. Over at my machine, I've got a couple of tools that I'm gonna to use. For my foot, I've got a quarter inch piecing foot. I've also got a stiletto to help keep things straight as they go under the foot. And I've set my stitch length to about two, which will help when we go to recut these blocks that we don't lose the integrity of the stitching. So I've aligned my two wedges here. I don't usually use pins for, these, for joining these small wedges. I will use pins when I go to put my rows together though. All right, so when I'm sewing these wedges, I'm gonna sew them from the wide end toward the narrow end. And as I'm approaching the narrow end here, this is where the wedges tend to get a little squirrely. So if you have a stiletto, you can use it just to keep the fabrics moving straight as they go under the foot there. Now, before we do anything else with this block, we need to press it. I usually give a press to the wedges as they're sewn. And then I'm gonna flip back the center wedge to press that seam. I'm not smashing it down because with these bias edges, I could really distort the piece by doing that. But I do want a nice crisp edge there. And now we're gonna trim away a little bit of extra fabric here. To do that, I'm gonna line my ruler up with this angled edge of the wedge. And then I'll just trim away that little bit that goes beyond. So it gets a tiny bit of the center wedge and a tiny bit of the outer wedge. And now that gives us the angle to join the other print wedge to.
Now we'll press this block again the same way. So giving it a press to the seam first and then flipping back the print wedge. And what I want you to notice is that the seam allowances in the block are going in the same direction. That's going to be important when we go to put multiple blocks together so that the seams aren't fighting each other. And what I want you to notice on the front is here is the tip of that white triangle. It's pretty far from the edges. That's the way we want it. You haven't made a mistake. <laughs> now we want to take this funny shaped object and turn it into a triangle that'll be easy to join up with the other blocks to make the whole quilt. So to do that, I'm using a 60 degree triangle ruler. If you don't have one of these, that's okay because we've also got a paper template to help you get the blocks to the right size. But I find it easier to cut along with this nice rigid edge, so that's what I'm gonna use. So on my 60 degree triangle, I'm gonna find the mark that I'm gonna use. For this pattern, it's the seven and three quarters. So from the seven, one, two, three. It's that line that's just above the eight on my ruler. Yours might look a little different. What I'm gonna do is, keeping an eye on that line, Try to get that line pointing right towards the corners of the wedge unit that I've sewed. And I can double check while I'm doing that, that this center line is going right here through the point in the, of the center triangle. Once I've got that aligned, I'll be able to trim off anything that extends beyond. And you'll probably have just a little bit that extends beyond. Now I wanna talk about what if you're lining yours up and you don't have enough block to make it to the seven and three quarters mark. That can happen depending on if you made little um, differences in cutting out your template or cutting your fabric or the way you're piecing, like how big or small your seam is, that can affect it. And so what I wanna reassure you is that as long as you do the same thing for every block that you trim, your pieces will come together just fine. So if your block ended up too small, that's cool. What I want you to do is just use the seven and a half inch mark on yours, just a quarter inch down from that, from that edge, okay? Once you've got your ruler lined up with your block, lined up with the corners, trim away any extra, this little bit at the tip, and the other side. You'll see there's just a little tiny bit, but it matters. <laughs> and now you know these are a nice 60 degree. What we wanna do is finish the triangle by aligning your regular quilting ruler with each of the corners of the wide end of the block and trim that away. And now you have a finished triangle block. Now let's talk about how to make half blocks. Half blocks are a little bit different than whole blocks. For one thing, there's none of the white or the neutral color that you picked for your center wedges. There's gonna be print wedges there and on the side. You may wanna save this step until you've got the layout for your full quilt using all your whole blocks. And the reason is you may wanna be very precise about which fabrics you choose to fill in the spaces at the edge of your quilt. But whenever you're ready, here's how you're gonna do it. You take one of your half blocks and make, take a minute to make sure you have the right side that you're gonna add your wedge to. It's easy to mess this up, but on the side that's perpendicular, that's the side that doesn't get the wedge added to it. The side that's angled, that angled cut is the side that we're gonna add, add the wedge to. We'll do this the same way as before, sewing from the wide end to the narrow end. Just like before, I'm gonna set that seam first and then press. The block I'm working on here is the right half wedge block. With that one, we press the seam allowance towards that center half wedge. But here I have a left half wedge block too. And you can see that they're going in opposite directions. The right half wedge block 
the seam allowance is pressed towards that center half wedge. And on the left half wedge block, the seam allowance is pressed away from the half wedge towards the full wedge. Now let's trim these up. We're using the same ruler, but we're gonna use a different line on it now. We're still using the seven and three quarter marks, but we're also paying attention to these lines that go down the middle. These perpendicular lines will help us line up with the outer half wedge side of the block. So here's how we're gonna do that. First, I'm gonna take a look at where that seven and three quarter inch line is. It's this white one right here above the eight. I wanna set that so that it hits the raw edge of this wide end of the fabric. And keeping that true, I also want to line up one of these straight lines, this one that's on the right of the center, line that one up with the raw edge of that half wedge. Once I do that, I can trim away the extra. And now I've got that half wedge. We're doing the same process for the left hand wedge. We're just on the other side of the ruler. So lining up my seven and three quarter inch mark with this wide end and lining up this seam allowance line, this time the one that's on the other side of the center line, the left side. So looking at my, after the first trim, paying attention to this half wedge block, finding that perpendicular seam, that perpendicular edge there. I'm gonna line my quilting ruler with that raw edge. And then slide the ruler down so that this edge, the other edge of your quilting ruler comes right to the corner of the wedge unit. And now you can trim that away and you have a half triangle. You'll do the same thing with your other piece, but the half wedge is on the other side this time. So I'm gonna align it like that. Align the edge of my quilting ruler to the edge of that half wedge, and then slide it down until this edge of the quilting ruler meets the corner of the wedge unit. And there you go, half blocks ready to use. In our next video, number four, we're gonna take all these blocks and start to create a layout and then put rows together.